So today we'll solve several problems by the method of vector algebra. And we'll start with the bisector theorem, and then it'll get even more interesting. And so what I would like for you to pay attention to is how straightforward the solution of all the problems is. It doesn't mean that the algebra will be super simple. It might get a little uh, messy, but it'll be unsophisticated in terms of the complexity of the expressions, basically linear expressions, even if the coefficients have complicated expressions. That's number one. And number two, that is not to say that this does not require practice. Okay, so that's point number one. Uh, but point number two, appreciate that we're doing algebra, or rather we're using algebra to solve geometric problems, even though we have not given up any of the algebraic intuition, because we are doing algebra with geometric objects. When you introduce coordinates, which is coming, and convert all geometric objects to, to numbers right away, that's when you're risking losing the geometric insight and the geometric perspective on what's going on. And you may get through the complicated calculations and get a complicated answer and not know what it means. We're not at all at risk of that here because we're working with objects that are not just have direct, direct geometric interpretation, but are actually geometric objects. They're just directed segments. So that's the beauty. That's the appealing part of this framework, and that's really ge the genius of it. Seems to combine both worlds of algebra and geometry in a very effective manner. Okay, so let's prove the bisector theorem. So here is what the theorem states, that if you have a triangle and you bisect one of the angles, then the base on which it lands, the bisector, is divided into two segments whose lengths are in proportion of the corresponding sides. Once again, I won't put any letters on the board because I don't want you to go hunting for letters when I say AB divided by BC. I'll just keep saying this over this, so just keep looking at the board. So this over this equals the length of this side over the length of this side. Or equivalently, this over the length of this side equals this over the length of this side. That's what we need to prove. Uh, you will recall that the geometric proof is quite ingenious. You construct an additional parallel line, you find similar triangles, and it's quite elegant, but requires ingenuity. So let me remind you what we learned last time about straight lines and how they are represented by vector algebra. If we have a vector A, I won't even draw the vector. Uh, because all we're interested in is its tip right now. So here would be an arbitrary origin, and then the vector A points from the arbitrary origin to the point, to this point, and the vector B, the same thing, to this point. And we're looking at the linear combination alpha A plus beta B. And if alpha plus beta equals 1, then this linear combination will sweep out the line that passes through these two points. When alpha equals zero and beta equals one, we're right here. When beta equals zero and alpha equals one, we're right here. When they both equal one half, we're right here. When one of them is greater than one and the other one is negative, then we go beyond the points. We go outside of the segment, but we still stay on this line. That's what we discovered. And what we discovered is that if let's say alpha and beta are such that the point lands here, then the segment is being divided in proportion beta to alpha. If you don't think about it, it's counterintuitive. If you do think about it, it's perfectly intuitive. Because the closer alpha is to one, so the larger alpha, I should say the larger the alpha, right? the larger the alpha, the closer we are to the point A. And the larger the beta, the closer we are to the point B. So it makes sense that they switch around like that. And if you want to prove it, then you can look at it this way. Slight algebraic manipulation. I'll just break out A. And alpha minus 1, because alpha and beta add up to 1, is precisely minus beta. And when we factor it out, 
And so here's what we see when we're at this point corresponding to this linear combination. We can think of it as being at A and then the beta fraction of the segment B minus A, which is this. That's B minus A. That I can draw in. So the point that we land on that corresponds to this linear combination is precisely the beta fraction of the segment B minus A. So yes, this is the beta portion of the entire segment and this is the alpha portion of the entire segment. Now let's apply these ideas here and there will actually be a little bit of, a little bit of algebra so I have to be strategic on where it goes but let's call this our origin. Now we're imposing vectors upon this geometric problem. So when we're presented with this problem there are no vectors. It's up to us to impose vector algebra on the problem and there's great arbitrariness on how you choose to do it. You can do it whatever way you want. The way I'm showing you right now is not necessarily the way but maybe it's pretty good. So I'm going to call this vector A and I'm going to call this vector B and I'm going to say that this vector let's call it u, is alpha a plus beta b. So the way I think about it as a student of linear algebra is I really want to have a basis. So I think of a and b as my basis and now I will start expressing everything in terms of a and b. So that's just paying homage to the linear algebra part of our background. Okay? Okay. So this is the vector u. It, rep it represents the bisector, the angle bisector. And so now the task that we're facing is translating the condition of the problem into algebra. And what's the condition? What's given in this problem? What's given in this problem is that this angle equals this angle. And we have expressions for these angles in terms of these vectors. There are linear combinations and dot products. That's the beauty. We have so few elements to work with that we kind of know what to go for. We have two unknowns now, alpha and beta, so we need two equations. That's, how, that's the, again, the algebraic part of my brain. One equation we already have, alpha plus beta equals one. That's just because this point lies on the segment between the two vertices. So we already have one equation. And the other equation will come from the condition that this angle equals this angle. So let's express this angle in terms of the dot products. What else do we have at our disposal? And I'll just go, let's call it gamma, and I'll express the cosine of gamma. We don't really need to take the arc cosine. What we'll say is that the cosine of this angle equals the cosine of that angle. So you remember the expression, it's A dotted with U divided by the length of A divided by the length of U. That's all it is, so let's just write it. It's A dotted with alpha A plus beta B divided by the length of A and the length of U. And once again, we use the same letter without the arrow to indicate the length of the corresponding vector. So A is this length, B is this length, U is this length without the arrow on top. And we can do the exact same thing on this side except with the vector b. So it will also equal b dotted with u divided by the length of b, the length of u. So I didn't write out here that the vector u is alpha a plus beta b because you see the first thing that happens is that it cancels. It's the same non-zero quantity on both sides. So let's multiply it out. We have, let's skip some steps, alpha times a dotted with a. A dotted with A is, of course, A squared, cancels this A, and we just have A alpha. That's simple enough. Plus, this won't be as simple. We have A dotted with B divided by the length of A. Equals, and before I finish this, I want to point out that this is both a little messy, but also super simple. Because as far as alpha and beta are concerned, it's just going to be a linear equation, right? Yeah, so the coefficient looks a little big. Not this one, but this one. And maybe a little like, ah, I'm not sure about that. But that doesn't matter. So what do we have here? We have A dotted with B, of course I use commutativity, divided by the length of B 
alpha plus b dotted with b's, this b squared, it cancels, so we get b beta. Okay, quite simple. Now let's collect like terms, alpha on the left side, so we have a, Okay, simple linear equation. So, as far as the linear algebra students and us are concerned, we're done. We have two equations, equation number one, equation number two, and two unknowns. How hard can it be to solve a linear system of equations with two equations and two unknowns? Not very hard. But we can get a little cute here just to make it super easy. And that is, I will factor out A from here and I will factor out B from here. So when I factor out A from here, so the two quantities in parentheses are now identical and we can just cancel them. And we know it's not zero because this is precisely cosine of two gamma. So our second equation is A, A alpha equals B beta. We have two equations, equation number one, equation number two, and two unknowns. So our second equation is A, A alpha equals B beta. And that's basically what we need. A alpha, where A and B are just the lengths. So, so those are our two equations. Now that you can all solve. Let me just write out the solution. So I'm just going to guess the solution. And do you see that I successfully came up with two numbers that A add up to 1, agreed? And B, when you multiply the first one by A and the second one by B, you get the same thing. Okay, so that's our solution. And that's actually the answer to the question. Because you see, what we know is that if we're taking alpha of this, alpha of this vector and beta of this vector, then it flips. The proportions are beta to alpha, just like we reviewed over here. The proportions, the segment is divided in proportion beta to alpha. In other words, A to B. Now, when I'm talking about proportions, I can skip the denominator, right? But, you know, I'll be finding the ratio of these numbers. So this divided by this is in proportion A to B. In other words, it's in proportion of the length of this side to the length of this side, okay? So the takeaway here is that we set up the problem, we expressed the vector u in terms of a and b and acknowledged that it lies on that line, and then we just restated, that's now been erased, the condition that the two angles are equal in terms of the dot products, and then our algebraic intuition completely took over. But by the time we got the final answer, uh, we were not concerned that we would not be able to interpret it geometrically. Because we've got our numbers, and these numbers apply to these two vectors. Right? We've never lost touch with the geometric nature of the problem, even though most of the solution was spent doing algebraic manipulations. Pretty cool?